What's more, because they're grown in a lab, it's possible to genetically manipulate the mini brains in order to test potential genetic culprits in the search for a cure. Yet the mini brains had the heel of Achilles. Not all of them were made the same. Rather, depending on the brain area that was reverse engineered, the cells had to be reassured by various cocktails of chemical soups and left in isolation. It was a stark contrast to our own developing brains, where regions are linked by highways of neural networks which function in tandem. Posca was facing the dilemma head on. Betting on the brain's self-assembling ability, his team believed that it would be possible to develop different mini-brains, each representing a different brain region, and to merge them into a coordinated band of neuron circuits to process information. His concept paid off last year. In one mind-blowing research, his team developed two different parts of the brain into blobs, one representing the cortex, the other a deeper section of the brain considered to regulate reward and movement, called the stradium. Shockingly, when put together, the two blobs of human brain tissue blended into a functional shape, automatically forming neuronal highways that led to one of the most sophisticated recapitalization of the human brain. Pasca crowned the assembloids. Creme de la creme tissue engineering, a portmanteau of assembly and organoids. We have shown that regionalized brain spheroids can be put together to form fused structures called brain assembloids, said Pasca at the time. They can be used to investigate developmental processes that were previously inaccessible. And if it's possible to wire a lab-grown brain, why wouldn't it be possible to work with larger neural circuits? Assemblies, assemble. The product of this concept is a new report. The team began with human skin cells, scraped off 80 healthy individuals, and turned them into a stem cell-like creation called iPSCs. These cells have long been considered a milestone for personalized medical care until each represents the genetic makeup of its initial host. Using two different drinks, the team then created mini brains and mini spinal cords using the iPSCs. The two components were put together in close proximity for three days inside the lab incubator, floating softly around each other in an elaborate dance. To the delight of the squad, using tracers that shine in the dark under the microscope, they saw roads of branches reaching from one organoid to the other like arms in a close hug, and stimulated with electricity, the links were activated, indicating that the connections were not just for the show, they were capable of transmitting information. We make the parts, said Posca, but they know how to put them together. Then there was the menage a trois. Once the mini brain and spinal cord shaped a double-decker ice cream scoop, the team overlaid it on a sheet of muscle cells, grown separately into a human-like muscular frame. The end result was a very bizarre and stupid-looking snowman, made up of three curiously shaped spherical spheres. But against all odds, the brain spinal cord assembly reached out to the lab-grown muscle. Using a number of methods, including the muscle contraction calculation, the team found that this totally Frankenstein-like snowman was able to contract the muscle component in a close way to how our muscles twitch when required. The skeletal muscle doesn't usually contract on its own, Posca said. Seeing the first twitch in the lab dish immediately after cordial stimulation is something that isn't soon forgotten. What's your take on this? Let me know in the comments below and check out one of these other videos. This has been Mr. Singularity and I'll see you in the next one.